Okay. Uh, or that, that actually might be the whole class. Fantastic. So, <laughs> let's get started. Everything for your course. Is this not on the screen anymore? There we go. Everything for the course uh, is going to be on Brightspace. So, like I said, everything you do in here and everything you do at home is pretty much exactly the same. Um, for those of you at home, obviously you've, you've made it to Brightspace, so you probably wouldn't have found this, but make sure you bookmark it because you're going to be using this every day. Uh, instead of going the pre-recorded route, which I found was ridiculous, so I started pre-recording all the stuff for the course, and I realized that I was recording three and a half hours of stuff every day and making three and a half hours worth of stuff, so it was taking me 12 hours to prepare for a single day. <laughs> so I, that time doesn't exist in real life, so I have to do some of this stuff live. Um, so anyway, let's, let's go through the day one stuff. I think once we get moving here, people will get more comfortable. So uh, this stuff is always going to be laid out in chronological order here. Uh, I'm going to go through the safety stuff first. I think once we go over the safety stuff, people will start to feel more comfortable. We're all on the same page. We're all doing the same things. Uh, and then you'll know what we're doing for safety, and then you'll know what your obligations are for safety, and then maybe you can take a little bit of a breath and sort of like know where we're at collectively. So I'm going to really quickly go through the COVID handbook. You guys have, this is the, the board's COVID handbook. Um, if This is linked on, on Brightspace. If, if you, there's like a lot of stuff, frequently asked questions and stuff. A lot of people are asking me questions like, uh, what do I do uh, in phys ed? You know, like what, what's, what are the rules or whatever for that? A lot of that stuff is posted up here in the FAQ online. Oh boy, I'm getting fogged up here. I'm nervous too. I'm nervous too. First day, first day. I, I've been here for a week, by the way, with my other class and uh, everything's cool. So things are going well. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about your obligation. So first of all, I think at this point, I probably don't need to explain to you what COVID is. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard about it like a bajillion times and like through the media or for whatever at home. Um, but uh, I will talk a little bit about our safety protocols here. So the first thing and the most important thing this is for people at home too, uh, is that you self-screen every day. I'm sure you were told that. But if you have any symptoms of COVID, and I'll go through the list on here, um, COVID-19 information symptoms. All this stuff's available through the, uh, through, through Brightspace here. Okay, so let's go through them together. If you have a fever, if you have a new cough or a cough that's getting worse for reasons that you don't know, okay? So in other words, it's not related to allergies or your asthma or whatever. Uh, if you have shortness of breath, like you're having difficulty taking a deep breath, if you have a sore throat, if you have difficulty swallowing, if you have uh, lack of taste or smell that you weren't expecting, okay? So a sudden loss in taste or smell. Uh, if you have nausea, you're vomiting, diarrhea or abdominal pain, if you have a runny nose, if you have nasal congestion, that is like you're having difficulty breathing through your nose and it's unexpected, not related to your allergies, okay? Um, do you have pneumonia? Do you have unexplained fatigue? I mean, within reason, okay? Like significant fatigue. I have unexplained fatigue every day, but like, you know what I mean? Like if you, significant fatigue. Delirium, so that is like you have a change in your state of consciousness. You're having difficulty understanding things and you don't understand why. Uh, you have an unexplained increase in the number of falls within reason, okay? Again, I get this from time to time too due to clumsiness, but uh, you know what I mean? You find yourself uncoordinated for reasons that you can't explain. Um, you have an a decrease in your ability to concentrate, you have any exacerbation of your chronic condition. So you have, a, let's say that you have uh, IBS or something like that, and for some reason you're all of a sudden seeing a significant exacerbation in your symptoms. Uh, you get chills or headaches. Uh, conjunctivitis is pink eye, okay? So you see you have a new infection in your eye. Uh, and then there are some other um, miscellaneous ones here. So you'll notice that that is a ridiculously huge list, okay? <laughs> COVID has like this weird presentation profile where it presents like all kinds of weird symptoms, okay? Uh, you wouldn't even like think of some of the ones like loss of taste or smell, but like that's a significant one. So if you're experiencing any of those symptoms, don't come to school, okay? That's the bottom line. It's not a big deal. 
have somebody call in, let them know that you're experiencing one of these symptoms and don't come to school. That includes things like a runny nose. How many times last year did you go to school when you had a runny nose? Me personally, I did it many times, okay? Because I get sick with a minor cold maybe five times every winter. So this is gonna be hugely problematic this year, okay? I can almost guarantee I will miss some school because I have one of these symptoms. It's going to happen. I, I get a cold every, every winter. It happens every single winter. I'll probably get it from my son. You guys are probably going to experience these symptoms. So let's not be weird about it, okay? This is going to happen. And when it does, just don't come to school. If you start, expo if, if you start experiencing these symptoms when you're at school, find a way to get home, guys. If you're in class, I just have to send you to the waiting room. There's a waiting room where you go and wait, and then until someone can pick you up, or if you are transporting yourself home, you can just go home. But you have to let the office know, okay? The other thing is um, they ask you to go through public health and like fill in a little form. It's an online form, and they'll tell you whether or not you should get COVID tested. They pretty much always tell you to get tested. So I've already done it twice this summer. It's not a big deal if you have to get tested. It's a drive through so there's one in Grand River, and I think they're just opening another one in town. You drive through, you show them your health card information, and then they swab your nose, and that's it. Then you drive away, okay? And then they tell you your results in a couple of days. That's all. So you don't really come into contact with many people. The, the doctor that swabs you is like in a spacesuit. So it's really not a big deal at all. Again, I've done it twice. Um, and so you don't need to be nervous about it. It's a little uncomfortable because they have to really get that uh, swab into your nose. But other than that, it's, it's, it's like a sterile like tube that you pass through basically and then you're on your way. You never get out of your car. So uh, it's really not a big deal. Please follow all of the public health guidelines. It's for everybody's safety. You guys already know that. Um, but then you're going to know in a couple days and maybe you can just return to school. I think you have to wait till your symptoms are gone for at least 24 hours. I think the board wants you to wait 48 hours from the time that your symptoms are gone, even if it's not, even if you're COVID negative. If you do have COVID, obviously public health is going to report that to the school. It's kept private, okay, so that's none of anyone's business, except the school obviously then has to decide what they're going to do with regards to the class, the school, okay, so they will follow up on those things. And they're very good at following up on those things. Uh, we'll talk about some of the procedures in the classroom. It includes this form. So if you go at the very top of your uh, classroom up there and you click on more, there's a little bathroom break button. If you need to leave the class for any reason, you need to fill up your water bottle. And this includes during the nutrition break. You need to go to the bathroom. You have to fill out a form, okay? You just click that button. The form pops up. It's really easy to do. You just say where you're going, who you are, and then submit it. You don't need to ask me to go to the bathroom. I respect all of you and trust all of you. If you have to go, that's totally fine. You just fill in the form and just let me know. You gotta let me know that you're going, but just let me know, okay? A little wave or whatever, and then a leave is fine. That's good enough, I get it. You're going to the bathroom, okay? No big deal. I recommend that if you're gonna go to the bathroom, you probably go before or after the nutrition break because they're very busy during the nutrition break and there is a, a person limit on the bathroom. So when you go to the bathroom, there might be two people in there already or three people, I don't know what the limits are, and you have to wait outside in like a spaced line to get into the bathroom and it's kind of a pain. So if you go before or after the break, it's usually there's no one there. So anyway, it's up to you, but I recommend. Um, so that's one thing, and that's part of the public health contact tracing. So for example, if somebody in here has COVID, they go through and they check everywhere that you've been, including bathrooms and water bottle filling stations, and they check whoever else has been to those places, and then they decide who they're going to quarantine based on that. Okay, so who's going to stay home potentially for a waiting period before you come back to school. If a number of people present with, with COVID at any time, then public health has to make the decision of whether or not they want to close the school. But there's a reason for the cohorting. They have a limit. They won't tell us what the number is, but there is a limit where they're going to say, okay, we're going to isolate this class, but we're going to let the cohort remain. Or this is too many people. The cohort now has to take the cohort off or whatever. Uh, and then while, while they clean the school. Okay, and they'll always clean. They're always going to clean anytime when somebody's presents. They're going to go every, go cuckoo bananas with the sterilizing stuff, okay? I will say that I clean your desks every day. Uh, I, I go alcohol crazy in here. I've already used liters of alcohol. Um, but I, I, I clean all of your surfaces so you can feel comfortable like touching your desk and stuff. You don't have to feel weird about it, okay? I wear gloves and I go to town on everything. Um, but the school also wants you to wipe down your desk 
I'll leave it up to you. You guys decide how you want to do that. They want you to do it after lunch, but I mean, you're the only one that touched it at lunch, so I'm not really sure I understand that. I, I will clean it at the end of the day, so I'll give you that. Um, is there anybody in here who's allergic to Lysol? Just give me a heads up on this right now. I'm about to run out of alcohol, but I have a bunch of extra Lysol. We're good? If you don't want to say it or whatever, just drop me an email so I know I don't want to hit anybody with something they're allergic to. But it is, it's a board approved, so it should be okay. Um, okay, so let's get back to here. So we went over the symptoms. Don't come to school if you have these. And the same goes for me. It's almost guaranteed that sometime during this school year, you're going to miss school. Right? Like you're going to have a runny nose. That's just how things are. Stay home and make sure your parents call the school. If you have an unexplained absence in the past, yeah, I mean, the school didn't, wasn't hugely troubled by that. They didn't go crazy if you were gone for a couple days. I mean, obviously, you're supposed to, your parents are supposed to report your absences, right? But in the context of this, if you're gone for a couple days and it's unreported, all of a sudden, public health says, we need to know if this person has COVID now because they didn't come to school and we don't know why. And so then they have to follow up with you and then they make a big spiel out of it. So just make sure somebody calls the school and lets, lets us know why you're not here, okay? And if it's just because you're not attending school that day for whatever reason, that's fine. Okay? Like I said, you can do all this stuff from home, but somebody has to tell the school that you're not going to be here, okay? So that's it. So that's, that's symptom-wise uh, the first thing that you should know. The second component of this um, is what are we going to do in the room uh, in order to protect each other? So the first thing is that we're going to wear face coverings, okay? Uh, everybody in here is already doing that. Cloth ones are fine. Just make sure that you're wearing an actual face covering, nothing with like a little valve in the side. Well, those are the coolest. They don't actually do anything to protect other people because they just vent the air from behind your mask into the room, so they're not acceptable masks, just so you know, okay? Uh, from what I, from looking around in here, everybody in here already has an acceptable face covering, so this isn't like going to be a huge deal. But um, obviously, you want to pick something that's a breathable material. Plastic doesn't work. Um, it has to fit snugly around your face. Uh, and like I said, from looking around here, everybody looks like they're wearing an acceptable mask. It shouldn't impair your vision, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You guys already know all that stuff, uh, and we don't have to worry about uh, exemptions. I don't think in this class. If you do have an exemption. Like, that's fine. Be aware that there's people in the school that can't wear a mask for whatever reason. Uh, and so, like, not necessarily every single person in the school is wearing one. And then, like, that's just the way things are, guys. Okay? Give those people respect. Obviously, I'm sure, I'm assuming they would wear them if they could. But some people have mask exemptions for medical reasons. So, uh, and they don't, we don't publicize who those people are. So, um, you have to treat your mask as if it's contaminated all the time, which is kind of a pain. Uh, you'll notice that there's four hand sanitizer stations across the back of the room. Technically, every time before you touch your mask, you're supposed to sanitize your hands, and then you're supposed to sanitize them after. So if you want to take your mask off, you have to sanitize your hands, you take your mask off, and then you sanitize your hands again, okay? That's what medical professionals do, yes? Um, I brought my own hand sanitizer, but you don't use that. Of course. You are welcome to use your own. If you've got your own, it'll be more convenient for you, but obviously feel free to use the ones that are in the room. Uh, you also can wash your hands. So washing your hands is as good or better than using hand sanitizer. There's a sink at the back and it works great for washing hands. Please just make sure that you're not crowding around the sanitizer stations or the sink. Give everybody room, okay? You'll notice I've done my very best to space people out approximately a meter and a bit away, okay? We can't do two meters. It's impossible. I tried it. Uh, so there's no way to actually get people two meters apart, but we're, we're okay. We're in, the, we're in the neighborhood, all right? But while we're going around the classroom at lunchtime, everybody is supposed to wash their hands or sanitize their hands before you eat. You're supposed to wash and sanitize or sanitize your hands after you eat. So in order to do that, there's going to be some congregation towards the back of the room. Try and space it out, okay? Don't stick together. I don't know what you guys want to do after the break. I have been taking my class on a short walk around the school because this is a really, really long time to sit. Uh, you haven't experienced it yet, but 8.20 till 12.50 is a very long time to be seated in one place, or at least I find that it is. So if you guys are really into going for a walk, I'm totally cool with that. We can go around the school, but you just have to make sure that we actually maintain social distancing while you walk around, okay? You can't walk shoulder to shoulder with people outside. You got to spread it out. You can talk to each other, but you got to spread it out, okay? It's a little bit inconvenient and weird while you're walking around the school, but you got to do your best, Okay. Uh, so like I said, the face covering thing is a big thing, and the other part is the hand washing or the hand sanitizing. The easiest thing to do is the hand sanitizer because it doesn't require 
all of the steps of the hand washing. It's much faster because you put the hand sanitizer on your hand, you rub it in, and once your hands are dry, they're sanitized, okay? So that takes maybe eight seconds. It's pretty quick. Whereas hand washing, you have to wash with soap on your hands for a minimum of 20 seconds. If you're not using 20 seconds to rub in the soap, you're not leaving it on there long enough to break apart the capsid on the outside of a virus, okay? So, I mean, if you're not gonna do wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap, that's essentially just like rinsing your hands under water and then just drying them off. It doesn't work if you don't do it for 20 seconds. So just make sure that you are doing that. Don't pay lip service to the hand washing, okay? It's a happy birthday twice. You guys may have heard this already. That's what, it takes about 10 seconds to sing happy birthday to yourself. And so you just wanna sing it twice. My son does it every day when he comes home. It's really cute. But so that, that's how you wanna wash your hands, okay? So 20 seconds with soap. You wanna dry your hands, there's paper towels at the back. When you're eating in here, the school would prefer uh, that you eat on a paper towel. I have sanitized your desks, but they want you to eat on the paper towels. They're at the back. If you have like some kind of container that you're eating from, I found last week that most people just had like a container that they have their food in and they just eat out of that. That's probably better, but uh, I'll leave it up to you. Okay, so paper towels are available for you. If you have a problem with your mask, it gets wet and gross. They don't work really well, like functionally when they're wet and gross. Uh, so far, we've been really lucky with weather in that it hasn't been turbo hot outside. This room can get sweltering, ridiculous. Uh, but I think the weather is supposed to be relatively cool this fall. So I think we're good. Uh, but if for any reason your mask is getting gross or whatever and you need another mask, I have extras. So just let me know. I'll bring you an extra mask. Uh, in terms of social distancing, I'm going to keep my distance from you. So I won't ever be closer to you than this uh, unless you need me to look at something on your screen, which is fine. But I'll put my little face shield on if I'm going to get any closer, okay? I have to wear it if I'm approaching students. So just, just so you know. So I'll put that on uh, and then I'll take a look at whatever on the screen. I generally am not going to touch your computers or anything like that, but if you would like me to, I will sanitize my hands first, okay? I will, I'll do my best. Uh, we're going to... I know everybody in here is going to do their best, okay? This is challenging, and it's a new environment for most people. You've obviously never done this before, I would assume. So uh, sometimes there's going to be some difficulties, okay, like adapting to this, but I, I think we'll be okay. So we'll do our best. It went fine, totally fine last week. So the one weird part about this whole experience is that I think that the school board didn't know what to do about eating. So they were like, okay, well, students have to eat. Like, how do we do that? Public health, I don't think, is entirely comfortable with the way that the school board has worked this out. But I, th I think this is just sort of just like a compromise, which is that obviously you have to take your mask off to eat in here. That's fine. I mean, it's not great, but it's fine. When you do that, I would encourage you to consume your food as quickly as possible and put your mask back on, okay? Uh, you, you can take it off, obviously, and if you are in a mental space where you're like, I have to get this thing off of my face, please let me know, okay? I will try and find some kind of accommodation for you. I actually think there's a room somewhere that's like the mask escape room for people that are like freaking out in their mask. I've worn this thing pretty much nonstop for a month, so it's absolutely doable. Okay. I, I, I must say that after a few days of wearing it, you stop noticing it. I, I really have stopped noticing that I'm wearing it. So that does happen eventually if you're, if you're not used to wearing it all day. But it is uh, uncomfortable. And if you're like, like I said, if you're in a bad headspace and you need to get the thing off your face, just let me know. I'll try and find an accommodation for you for that. But in general, we got to keep them on here at, at all times. And when you're done, I, like I said, I encourage you to put it back on when you're done eating. Certainly before you're going to start conversing with the other people in the class. It's probably not a good idea to do that without having your face mask on. Okay, but we do have 45 minutes of break to eat. <sighs> in terms of when to hand wash, anytime you come into the room or you change locations in the school, you're asked to sanitize your hands. Um, if you're going to touch your mucous membranes, you got to itch your eyes, you got to itch your nose. Yeah, I encourage you to, to uh, sanitize your hands before you do that. Okay, um, before you eat, after you eat before you touch your mask, after you touch your mask. Pretty much before you do anything. <laughs> okay, so before you do a thing, sanitize your hands, and after you do that thing, uh, sanitize them again. It's kind of a pain, okay? I totally get that. Um, I will also say that 
over the course of the last week, my hands have dried out until like my skin is going to fall off my hands. Like my hands are super dry from hand sanitizing so much. So you may need to have some like a little bit of uh, lotion or something for your hands. Some sanitizers are a little harder on your hands than others. The one at the back is actually not that bad. That one's pretty good. This one that I got from Costco is not so good. So this one is a little bit harder on my hands, but um, it's, it's not bad. Honestly, again, I've been doing this for a week. My skin's a little bit dry, but it's really not that big of a deal. I don't, as far as I know, there's no one in here with an allergy. Uh, but if that does show up, uh, if you do are getting an allergic reaction, let me know. I'll deal with that. So best that is possible physically. But health professionals do it all the time, right? Nurses, doctors, before you go in a room, after you go in a room in the hospital, you're always sanitizing your hands or washing them, right? So like this, is not, it's not, this isn't like a thing that people have never done before. If you work in a healthcare setting, you've already done all of this stuff. And you do it every day. So... It's not new territory. Okay, so we got face coverings. We talked about hand washing. We talked about social distancing, which we're going to maintain all the time at school. When you get to school, I don't know how much information the school has given you about this. You're supposed to go straight here. When you leave the school, you go straight home. <laughs> okay? So there isn't like a, an area where you go. You don't congregate in the halls. You have no lockers. Uh, so the hallways are just like a tube that you use to get to this room. And then the tube you use to exit the school, and that's it. Okay, uh, I obviously like previous to this, that was like a place where you just like go and meet people, and you like see people in the halls, and it's just like we just don't do that anymore right now. So, um, wow, I hope this doesn't last very long, but I don't know. That's what we're gonna do for now. So, um, we'll, we'll definitely make the best of it. So, okay, let me keep going here. Hand washing protocol, face coverings. Okay, let's talk about the VLE. That's the virtual learning environment. Uh, this is called Brightspace. Uh, we're going to be using this for the entire semester, as I mentioned. It's like a content delivery system. I've never used it before. So every time I use it, I find out something new, and I usually break something. So just as a heads up, uh, it's just not going to be a perfect, seamless experience from beginning to end. I'm doing my very best. Uh, but I do uh, make mistakes, and I, not everything's been perfect. People are like, I can't hand this in. Uh, this button doesn't work. You know, like this kind of stuff. Like, I, I'm just figuring out how to use it, okay? It's much more complicated than Google Classroom. But it's also a lot more um, powerful than Google Classroom. So there's a lot more things you can do with it, uh, which is why, we, as a science department, we've chosen to switch over. I think almost all of us switched over. So, like, there's more assessment strategy stuff that you can do. It's, there's more types of content that you can plug into it, and it'll work well with. Um, so, so there are definitely some advantages to using this, which is why we switched over. If you're looking at the thing and you're like, oh, this is like a mess. I don't know where to find anything or what's going on. Uh, if you click on that link right there, there's actually a playlist of, like, how to use the, the VLE. It's on YouTube. I think there's, like, 15 videos. You obviously don't have to watch them all. But it goes through all kinds of stuff, like just how to navigate the home page, how to find an assignment, how to hand things in, you know, like general stuff, okay? So if you're really like mind blown on this, like that's available to you. Also ask, just ask guys, like I'll give you any information that I have on that. There is an app that goes along with this called Brightspace Pulse for Android and uh, iPhone, Apple products, okay? I highly recommend that you get the app. It allows you to look at the content. I don't know if it allows you to actually do the content, but you can look at it. And it also gives you reminders and updates about the course. If I push out an update about the course, it pops up on, it gives you like a push notification. If an assignment is coming due, it gives you a push notification. Okay, it's really useful for helping keep track of what's going on in the course. If there is a last second change and you're at home, like, Let's say YouTube is down for the day and I have to switch the content delivery, okay? It's a, that's just going to pop up as a little push notification on your phone. It'll help me stay in contact with you in like a situation like that. So I highly recommend you use it if you're at home uh, or if you're here. You should right now on your phone, you do that. Install that app if, if you have your, uh, a mobile device. You should do it right now. It's called Brightspace Pulse. When you're doing the the uh, login, it asks for who provides your content on Brightspace. And what you're looking for is WRDSB, the Waterloo Region District School Board. Okay, a lot of people are confused by that. They like try and type in KCI or something like that. It's not specific to KCI. This is owned by the province. This uh, 
this system. So it's, 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 it's through the school board. The school board is providing it to you. And the company that makes it is actually based in uh, downtown Kitchener. If you've ever been to, they've seen their headquarters. So but it's called D2L. It's just just down the road. So take a second and log into that now. By the way, people at home, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type them into the chat, and I'll do my best to answer them. I, I have a little chat box open uh, on the side of uh, my laptop here and usually I catch it when people are typing things in there. So if you're doing this right now and you're like, whoop, something's not working, just let me know. If you're having any difficulty logging in, let me know. It's just your school login credentials, though. Oh, I forgot to do, for the, for the people at home, uh, in the chat, if you could just give me a here or a present, I got to take attendance for the people at home as well. So we're going to probably do this in the live chat the first thing probably every day, just so I can uh, get an idea of who's actually here. I, I have to do attendance for you. So here, present. Cool. Thank you. All these ones. Let me clear this. Clear? Um, hmm. No. Everybody in cohort A is here. Cohort B. Mohammed um, was just here. I just met him. Some Oscar. Elliot. Okay, cool. Thanks for letting me know. Connor is here.
Shane, no Angela, no Lily. Okay, okay so hopefully everybody's signed up at this point. Uh, by the way, I'm going to get you to sign up for like a whole bunch of things uh, during this period because there's a whole bunch of like online services that we're going to use. So um, there's one of them. Um, you, do you guys know the uh, the calendar? And why isn't it showing the calendar here? Why does it work when you already sign into it? It says I'm not authorized or assigned to a role for something. Yeah. Other people are getting login error? No. Really? Yeah, no, they have to make just put on the second one that's like Waterloo ESB or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Group problem solving. Appreciate it. Um, I'm actually looking at the wrong course here. I should probably go to the right course. How do I do that? Oh, it's up there. There we go. This is the course. <laughs> okay, so what's the daily schedule look like? Hopefully somebody's told you this already, but we are currently in learning block one, which goes from 8.20 until 10.20. Uh, usually, if you're at home, uh, oh, sorry, I missed you, Lily, in the attendance. Oh, thanks, Mom. Uh, sorry, you guys, just give me one second. which is two hours, okay? What we're gonna do during that time is basically two regular periods that you would have done previously, okay? Keep in mind that how things used to work at KCI is that you had a, a 60 minute period and then a 15 minute not period. Because <laughs> we have MSIP, right? So technically the periods are supposed to be 75 minutes long, which means that 15 minutes of your day in MSIP was supposed to always be devoted to a specific course. So 75 minutes is one lesson in the traditional model. And so what I'm going to do to try and keep things a little bit consistent is I'm going to take those 15 minutes and push them into learning block three, which you guys are doing at home, okay? So in block one, we're usually going to do two regular lessons, okay? What we would normally do in class. Uh, and then we're gonna leave the time in, in learning block three for completing questions and stuff like that, stuff that you normally would have done in MSIP, although you may or may not have done them in MSIP, I don't know. So it depends on how you've, you've previously operated. But keep in mind that most other schools would have just had a 75 minute period, so there is another 15 minutes per period. I still, I still need that time, so. Uh, in order to get through all of the course material. So I think we're going to bump that stuff into learning block three. Uh, there's a nutrition break, as I mentioned, for 45 minutes. And then there's a second learning block from 11.05 to 12.50, uh, in which we will do one point something lessons. Okay, I will say that, like, I have this plan in my head, and I know how long things take in the traditional model, and that I've never done this before, and that last week it was not what I was hoping or thinking it would be anyway, because things don't run like that in real life. Uh, there are delays. And as you can see, like when you're doing things live, like it's, it's not seamless, like there's delays and people ask questions at home and then it takes like a minute. I have to respond to them, but they're not here. And then it, it's like weirdly delaying. 
So we'll see how the timing works for this, okay? But everything is a work in progress. The timelines are a work in progress. How much course content we cover is a work in progress. What we're shooting for is to cover the overall expectations for the course. So if you Google up the, uh, the learning expectations for 3U Bio on like the Ontario curriculum, you'll see there's like three general course expectations per unit, okay? They're very broad. Normally we cover almost all of the specific expectations, which are like, know about this, know about this specific thing, be able to do this. We normally do all of it, or at least we attempt to do all of it. We usually get pretty close. In this model, things may be a little bit more flexible. So we may be moving stuff around in order to shoot for the, the higher goals and less for the specific goals, okay? Just so you know. There's probably no other way to do this. There is going to have to be some flexibility built in in order to accomplish everything in this time and then still honor like the, uh, the hybrid model. So uh, I'll keep you updated on that. Um, so like I said, second learning block would be like a lesson in a bit. And then there's this learning block at home. Uh, I've been trying to figure out how to do this. So I, I can't do anything synchronous. So there's not going to be live content at that time. You guys might be traveling home during a lot of that time. Some people have like an hour or a half an hour bus ride or whatever to get home. So that's like, there's no delay in between the third block or the second block and the third block. So I don't know when you're supposed to go home. There's, there's like, a, they didn't really work that out. So. So I can't do anything live during that time, obviously, because a bunch of people won't be able to do that. Um, so that's probably going to be the time for you to finish the work that from the day. Uh, I might give you some videos to watch during that time, some like YouTube videos. And in general, I'm always available in the virtual classroom for that entire block, especially for the people at home. This probably doesn't apply so, so much to you guys because you can ask questions all day. But if you're doing the content at home and you're like, I don't get this, I don't know what this is, can you take this up? Uh, you can drop into the virtual classroom. I'll show you where that is. So it is. Sorry, this crashes every time. So the virtual classroom, if you click on the little buttons at the top, not that. Uh, more virtual classroom. You'll see it right there. Uh, that's the one for today. They're pre-scheduled. So uh, I usually link it in the day's stuff as well, but you just click on that and go in and it's kind of like a Zoom meeting. So it's, it's video, audio, conference, and it has like a little board in the middle that I can write on and show you stuff on. So if I need to take up something or like show you what something looks like or explain something, there's like a little thing in the middle. Uh, it supports like up to 150 people, although I we won't need that. Um, so far, it's mostly worked. So I actually tried doing the class through it at the very beginning and it crashed a whole lot when I did the whole class on it. So I'm not going to do the whole class on it, uh, but I will use it for the virtual classroom. It seemed to work okay as long as you're not using it during like a super high traffic time and I think it should be fine during learning block three. It hasn't been a problem yet. So uh, you can just jump on there anytime, ask questions, and when it's done, you'll notice at the bottom there's a place for recorded meetings. It, it, it automatically records the meeting. So if I take up the homework or something during that time because somebody's asked me to take up a homework question, you can watch that. You can go back and see that anytime. You might say, oh, I had this question. And I'll say, oh, I, I took that up. I did that already in learning block three. I will just tell you to go and have a peek at the video. Okay, you can, you can fast forward, move around a little bit just so you can like find the spot where, it's, where I take it up. But it's just so I'm not doing things again and again and again. Because in the previous model, everybody was in the room. So if I took up homework questions, you were there. Like you, you saw it. If you were interested, you would just look at it. But in this one, it's like weird. It's like maybe you're there or maybe you're not there. And I can't do it a hundred times. So I can't like constantly, constantly repeat things a million times. That's what was happening last week. And it takes so long to put this stuff together that if I start doing that, then I end up like not having stuff ready for the next day. So um, I, I got to draw the line somewhere. So I, I may direct you to go back and look at one of those videos of something being taken up, just so you know, okay? Uh, and if it doesn't answer your question, feel free to email me. Again, it's really important that you stay in contact with me. If you don't know what's going on, you don't know how to do something, let me know, okay? I want to jump into a Google Meet with you or something and explain things to you. I want to. I want everybody in here to be successful. So, like, communicate with me, please. At home, here, communicate with me so that we can get through this course. This is, is going to be a bit of a challenge. This is obviously something unusual, and we're not used to operating like this. So, 
communication is really going to be important here. All right, let me keep going. We what did we just do? Do do, do. schedule. So we talked about the daily schedule. You guys would have received this cohort schedule, hopefully. Hopefully. So we're just starting course two today, Thursday, September 17th. You guys are going to be in this room until Wednesday, September 23rd. That's a five-day block. That's how much time I have to do to a unit. Isn't that crazy? So they're five-day units now. Uh, normally they would be a month or something like that, approximately 15 to 20 days, depending on the unit. Uh, but now I need to do a unit in five days. So just keep in mind that this course is going to be moving at a really fast pace. Uh, there's lots of stuff for you to do. Please try not to fall behind, okay? If you're at home and you're just kind of like piecing out and like occasionally taking a look at stuff, you are going to be hopelessly lost here, okay? There is a, a ton of content. You will never make it, okay? This is, this is going to require commitment on your part to actually getting all of this stuff done. And there's just no other way to do it. I've, we've been given this timeline and we've been given this curriculum. And so like, ah, we, have to, we have to do it, okay? So imagine that you were doing exactly what you were doing before, but every period a day was this course. That's what this is, okay? Uh, and it's that amount of work, which seems like a crazy amount. And unfortunately, it is a crazy amount, but it, it's not that much in context of how much actual time you're spending in here, okay? So it feels like a lot, but it really is just like doing the entire day in one course. Uh, if we're, you know, falling behind as a class, if things are just like not doable, Let's, we'll talk, okay? All right, again, this is, this is a work in progress. We don't necessarily have to cover every specific learning expectation if it's just not possible to do in the time that we've been given. We'll shoot high, um, but if we don't make it, like, let's chat, okay? Like, we may have to modify things as we go along. I don't know what this is gonna look like at the end, and I've never done it before. Okay, thanks, Connor. So, you guys, like I said, are gonna be here until Wednesday. Then you guys at home are gonna drop by here starting Thursday, September 24th, and you're gonna go till September 30th. That will take us to the end of unit two, Blech, which is crazy. Um, that's just the end of September. We're already done unit two. Uh, and then you guys are going to head back into your course one environment, whatever you're doing for course one. So uh, I don't assign any work to you during your course one time. Your course two time is my time. I will attempt to make everything doable within the time that we have together. And then once you head back to course one, this course is just like on pause, okay? You won't get announcements from me. You won't get material from me. This course doesn't exist for you during that time, assuming you've completed all the assignments, okay? So if you don't have all the assignments complete, yeah, you still have to get them done, guys. Preferably as soon as possible because I have to mark all the stuff that you're doing. Uh, and I have to mark it as soon as possible. So because like, I don't know when midterm marks are gonna come out, but like, I don't know, a couple weeks, like not far away. Okay, so like I have to stay on top of that. If, if you're delaying something by a week, keep in mind that that is the same thing as delaying something for like a month and a half in the previous model. That's, a, that's ridiculous, right? If you miss a day, you missed a week. Okay, keep that in mind. It's like, oh, what did we do in biology yesterday week? A lot, okay? So just keep that in mind. Things move very fast. It's a week a day, so. All right, I'll, you can go back and look at that schedule anytime. It's posted there for you if you need it. I have to get used to this. Maybe I can contact them and get this to stop crashing. All right, um, let's talk about the course outline. Welcome to biology. That's what we're doing in here. Uh, this is grade 11 university level biology. We have five units that we're gonna cover. Genetics, uh, we're not going in this order, by the way. I've switched the order, uh, but the, this is the way that they are ordered in the curriculum book, which doesn't really matter, but genetics, uh, animal structure and function, plants, anatomy, growth and function, diversity, which is what we're gonna start with. It's what the textbook starts with as well, and it kind of makes sense to start with this, uh, and then evolution, which is gonna be our last unit. Okay, they're actually laid down uh, in Brightspace like that. If you have a look at Brightspace on the side, you can see the layout of the units right there. So one is diversity, genetic processes, animals, plants, and evolution. Um, so from here, 
really the important stuff you need to know. I'm still going to be evaluating your learning skills. How that's going to work is I'm not sure. I'll get back to you on that. I can obviously make anecdotal observations of how you're working in class. Um, I don't know what we're going to do for at home. I can see when you're participating at home. So I can see when you've logged in and what content you've done at what time. It, the software logs all of that, which is one of its advantages over Google Classroom, which doesn't track uh, when students are doing work. Um, so I can do it that way. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work. Let me get back to you. Okay, so I didn't even know I was going to use this new learning environment until a week ago. And so I don't, uh, I'll get back to you. The evaluation breakdown. Typically, this course has 70% that's from assignments, lab reports, projects that you work on, presentations, quizzes, tests, uh, and then 30% exam. There is an exam period scheduled. They haven't explained how that's going to work. It's three days for four cohorts, uh, which doesn't really make sense. Um, I, I don't know if we're actually going to have an exam. Uh, and if we do have one, I don't really understand how it's going to work. So paper is a no-no. If I, if I print some paper, I can't give it to you for seven days after I've touched that paper. Uh, and after the paper has touched you, I can't touch it for seven days. Uh, so there's huge delays in using paper. If I hand something out to you, if I print something out for you, I gotta wait to give it to you. And then after you use it, I have to wait to touch it. And then after I mark it, I have to wait another seven days to hand it back to you. So obviously that's insane. That's ridiculous. I mean, that would mean there's like a month delay after exams before I can like get the exams back to you. So that's ridiculous. We're, we're not going to do that. So it won't be paper. Uh, so I do have to find some other, I don't know. We haven't even discussed this as a school yet, guys. So this is like, who knows? I, I don't know if your other teachers mentioned what they're planning on doing for this. This is like so nebulous. I have no idea what this will be. So I'll get back to you. So I don't know if it'll be 30% exam. I don't even know if it has to be 30% exam before. It says that in the curriculum book, but they may be modifying that or suggesting something different for that. Okay? There may be some culminating assignment that we do towards the end. Uh, how that works, again, I'll get back to you. So it might not be worth 30%. I don't know. Uh, in terms of how the actual assessment works in this course, I'm working on that as well. So typically we had a fair amount of quizzes and tests, and then you do like a major project per unit. Um, I, most of my projects that we did previously are some type of hands-on activity. Like I said, all the labs are gone pretty much, or the physical ones. You are going to do some lab reports. Uh, they're going to be a slightly different format, and they're going to be virtual labs. Uh, and I don't really have a good strategy to mark those really yet. So um, I'll get back to you. We are going to do quizzes. They will be online quizzes. Uh, but they are essentially going to be open book because all the people at home are going to be writing them at home and I have no way of regulating how people at home are accessing information. So that's weird. So that, that's, that, that's, what, that's how it's going to work. So um, I'll get back to you on that. Projects, we are absolutely going to do, but I have to find ways to modify all of them so that they, are, they don't require you to you know, touch things because most of them involve some kind of pen and paper. A lot of them were cut and, well, not cut and paste, but like you're creating something like as a manipulative, which I can't do anymore. So um, there'll be a lot of videos, <laughs> okay? I'm going to get you to sign up for Loom. Have people in here used Loom before? Loom is like a, a way to record a video where it like, it's kind of actually it's similar to the way the live stream works here, where it's like a little video of your face in the corner and then it videotapes your screen. And then at the end, it just gives you a link and then you can hand the link in and I can see the video that you've just made. You don't have to include your face. I don't really care if you're showing me your face or not. Uh, it does help me get to know you a little bit better, especially if you're at home. But if you don't want to show your face, it's not a big deal. Uh, so I think that we're going to do a bunch of stuff as Loom videos. So you're going to show me a brief presentation or something explaining what you've learned about something. Uh, and then you're going to record as a Loom video and submit it. Okay. So I think we're going to do that a bunch. Uh, and then there'll be opportunities for, I think there's going to be a lot more smaller things and fewer big things. Uh, like at the end of the day, you might write a little blurb on your understanding of uh, protein synthesis or something like that. And then submit that. And then I'm going to evaluate that. I'll let you know. Okay. I'm still working on the evaluation piece. Not 100%. But it, it won't be exactly the same as it was previously. Attendance. I mentioned this in here. A day is a week. Please don't be absent. If you are, I mean, you can be absent from the school, but don't be absent from the course, okay? Just make sure that you're doing the coursework at home. If you're stuck, uh, if you're starting to get pushed up against deadlines and you're like not sure what to do, please email me, okay? 
We can do extensions and we can absolutely talk about extending deadlines for things, but attempt to meet them. Because if you start to push the deadlines, you're, you're going to get yourself into trouble. Things are going to pile because of how quickly we're going to move. So just let me know what the, how things are going, right? I understand people have jobs, people have other stuff going on at home. Man, I got a ton of stuff going on at home. So like I totally get that. So just let me know that if you're in that boat. There's no course enhancement fee uh, because we're not doing anything that would require a course enhancement fee anymore. There's no dissections. Um, although I might do a dissection as a, like I might do it live, like with a, a camera over top. Like I got this little camera stand and maybe I'll put like a camera and then you can see me do the dissection. It's not as fun, but uh, it's something. Uh, and for the people that are here, at least you'll be able to see it. But uh, And then you can see it at home live. Uh, I don't know. Let me get back to you on that one. I'm trying to figure out how to make it engaging and uh, do something so it's not just all computer, like click on this pig, click on this intestine or whatever, you know, like it's, it's not as engaging. Um, we don't normally, a, a part of your mark it, and your observations from unit one, which is like a lab skills unit, is about your skills in the lab. <laughs> so we're not gonna be doing stuff in the lab, so I don't know how to evaluate that. Um, I think, Part of it will be how you are performing the virtual labs, but I, I don't know exactly how I'm going to uh, evaluate that. Some of them have opportunities to, to show lab skills virtually uh, where you're going to like describe what you're doing. Um, that's already built into some of these labs, so I might look at that. i got to figure that one out. But I think for the safety piece, which is part of what I'm supposed to evaluate you on, uh, I'm just going to use that as like sort of like the safety protocols that we're following in class. I guess this is like a lab environment, question mark. So if you're like following the, the lab safety protocols, then that's like following safety. And then I can just like assess you on that. Okay, so we'll see. I don't know what you'll do for at home. Who knows? Uh, we'll figure it out. All of you have a textbook. Uh, we use the textbook a fair amount in the course normally, uh, but it's going to be more textbook heavy, unfortunately, now, because just as the way things are going to be arranged, there's more stuff reading from the textbook and there's more questions from the text and less of let's do this thing together in class. I, I just had to balance it a little bit more. So there is more textbook stuff. You will absolutely need your textbook every single day. You're not going to have a day where you won't need it. However, if you open your textbook, you will notice that there is a online sign. If you just turned right to it, perfect. There it is. You're going to want to sign up for that online textbook. For the people at home, I am going to email you the sign up for your online textbook. And then when you come, when you're back in the room here, your textbook will actually be sitting on your desk. It'll be labeled with your name on it, and you will have already signed up for the online text. Um, I will get that to you later today. So I'm in the process of figuring that out. But for the people in the room, you already have your text. Take a moment right now and sign up for your online text. In case you ever forget it, in case you don't have it with you, you will need it, and it'll be nice to have the online version accessible to you. Every textbook should have one inside. Hopefully they do. We paid for them, so might be on page two or back of page one. On the back of the same Okay, so that's like the first page? Okay, yeah. yeah, it's on the back of the first page. And again, for you guys at home, I will email you these. This is a work in progress. Once you've signed up for the online component, and the, for the people at home, you're going to do this the first day that you're in the room with me. You click on the link here that says textbook sign up. Okay, it's going to take you to a little Google form. You're going to sign up for your textbook, and that way I have a record of who has what textbook. Okay. You're going to need to know the number, which is inside the front cover. That's your textbook number. Hopefully everybody has a number printed right inside their cover. should be at the top. Here's this 42, for example. Um, and you're also going to need to know that funky number that you use to sign up for the Nelson textbook, that like Nelson 6574 or whatever. Okay? So it asks for both of those, one for your textbook number and one for the online course number. I'm going to hold on to both of those just in case you lose stuff during the semester. I can say, oh, I have your number. I can just give you your number, okay? And that way you won't get stuck ever. So that goes in the sign up form. Please make sure that the number inside the cover of your textbook is correct, like correct on the form. It has to be correct. 
I can only accept that numbered textbook from you. Okay, otherwise you may have gotten it somewhere else. It may be someone else's textbook that you're trying to return. You can only return your own textbook. The other thing about the textbooks is that uh, there's no way to return them early. Uh, so that it is yours until the end of the quadmester, uh, and I will collect them at the end, at which time they have to sit for seven days. No one can touch them before the next class can use them. Um, and I can't accept them early for that exact reason, which is I have nowhere to put them while they are sitting currently. So. I'll give you an opportunity to fill that in now. So for the people at home, sorry. Um, I will get you this information shortly. It's going to come to you over the course of today at some point. Is that Google Form working? This is the first time I've ever used it. Yeah, it's coming up? Okay. That's right, your student number. Yep. Where are we? Where it says student ID on the form. Oh, um, if you look on Brightspace, there is a. Uh, one sec. There's a little thing that says textbook sign up. Yeah, if you click on that, it's all the information there. If you don't know your student number, it should be on your schedule. Oh, it also asks you for damage in your text. Just leaf through your textbook and just check to see if there's any major damage. A tiny little mark or something on a page, don't worry about that, okay? But if it's water damaged somewhere, uh, it has a re like somebody drew all over it somewhere, flip, flip through, okay? Uh, it'll, it, it's going to show up. And then just make sure you note that on there. I don't want to hold you responsible for something somebody else did. Question? Uh, does my access to the ability exist? Fantastic. Really? Yeah. Can I just... Peek over your shoulder here real quick. Yeah. We always have problems with Oh, I wonder if do you mind if I to where you are, you can try. That's literally the next thing we're going to talk about, what you need to bring with you when you come to class. Oh, did I see someone's hand up?
We will talk about that. You mean, is, is Mr. Frick available? Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know when you go and visit him during an education break, probably. Um, the library is open for loaners, uh, but I'm t every time they loan something, they're supposed to keep it off limits for seven days. So I think all the loaners got used up last week, and they don't actually have anything to loan. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but there's an email did go out about that. Uh, in terms of like library services, we'll talk about that in a second, but the library is closed for everything else right now. So there's, it's just tech stuff at the moment. You guys good? Signed up? Okay, so the next thing on my list is, what do you need to bring to school? Equipment. Every day you need a charged Chromebook. You've got to charge it, okay? We'll use it all day. That's unfortunately, that's where we are at right now. So we're going to be on your Chromebook all day. You don't need to bring pens and pencils and things like that because you probably never use them. But you do need to have a face covering and you do need a Chromebook. If you have lose your face covering for whatever reason, I do have extras. Uh, if you're like I said, if you start to get like all gross or whatever, I have an extra for you. Yes. Physical notes, if you want to, if you want to, I um, will upload the note package. It's already up there. Um, it's like a PDF, and I have a strategy for you to do it on your Chromebook. It's, it's called Cami. I don't know if you've used it before. I have a subscription to Cami, so you guys can all use it for free. Um, We'll go through the sign-up for that in a second. So you can digitally take your notes on there, and it does work fairly well. I used it last week, and everybody like kind of liked it. So you can use that if you want. If you want to print the PDFs off at home, you you can do that. You're welcome to do that. But just it's not required. You don't have to do that. So that's just totally if you if you want to do that, you're welcome to do that. Some people like to write. I get that, um, and it's easier for drawing certainly. Um, but yeah, please bring your Chromebook charged. I do have this loaner charger. It may not reach your desk, and the school really hates that because they're they're worried about the tripping hazard of having the cord draping all over the room. So they 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 expressly told me not to do that. But sometimes people get stuck. So if you're really getting stuck, like we'll we'll try and figure out some way to help you out. But in general, please bring your Chromebook charged. Otherwise, you're going to get into trouble. Uh, that being said, if you um, for using your Chromebook in class it's probably a good idea to have a pair of headphones. You don't need headphones, uh, but if you're gonna be watching the videos or yeah, really watching any video while you're in here, it's kind of weird if you don't have headphones. Uh, so I, I recommend that you get a pair of headphones. They don't have to be great headphones. You can probably get headphones at the dollar store, but, uh, but you should have a pair of headphones. If you're like, I can't get a pair of headphones, I have no access to get headphones, just let me know. It's not a big deal, I'll get you a pair of headphones, okay? But you, sh you probably should have a pair of headphones. So just let me know if that's going to be a problem for you. I will 100% find you some headphones. Um, your Chromebook luckily has a microphone and a camera built in, and you will use that functionality. Usually if you're going to record a video, though, I'll push that into learning block three. So you're not like awkwardly recording a video like while everybody else is looking at you. That's weird. I, I totally get that that's weird. I have to do it up here sometimes. For the people for like this, this is weird. So, uh, so I, I'm not going to ask you to do that. We'll just put it in learning block three, and you can do it at home. It's also really weird to do with a mask on. So, so we'll just I'll leave that stuff for learning block three. But anyway, that's what you need every day. Uh, if you got a problem with your Chromebook, I'll get you to see Mr. Frick. Like we're still operating there. Like we'll uh, we'll find some way to get that resolved. But you do have to get it resolved. If you're having a Chromebook problem, like don't put it off. We you got to get that fixed because like like I said, you're going to be on it all the time, just like normal. We have a regular academic integrity policy, which means don't plagiarize. You are going to be doing some research projects in here. We're going to be talking about how to effectively record your research so that you don't accidentally plagiarize, but don't plagiarize. You guys know what that means. It means when you copy and paste stuff from sources on the internet, don't do that. Okay, you're going to properly attribute stuff. We're going to use APA formatting in here, uh, and it won't be a problem. It won't be a problem, but please don't do that. Don't put me in a bad position, because when you plagiarize stuff, we got to go up through all the channels. 
Uh, and it, it is kind of a big deal, okay? In university, that's a great way to get kicked out. So uh, it's a terrible habit. Don't get into that habit now. We'll, we'll talk about that. So last thing, your parents have to read this and they have to sign off on it, not physically, because I didn't give it to you physically. Uh, so the way that they are going to sign off on it is part of your very first assignment, which is right here, the student parent information survey. So this is just a regular student survey. You're going to tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me if I have to worry about any allergies from you. Uh, and your parents are going to give me their communication information, how to contact them. Uh, and at the, right at the very end of part three, you're just going to click a box. They're going to click a box that says, I've read the course outline and I understand the stuff in there. If for some reason you don't understand the stuff in there or uh, your parents don't understand the stuff in there, tell them to email me right away. Okay, I'm happy to have a conversation. I'll even set up a Google Meet and we can just chat. Okay, but uh, I got to get this done pretty quick at the beginning of the course. So that goes for you guys at home as well. Um, ideally by the end of Friday. Because especially for safety information, I like to review that really early in the course, you know, in case something happens. Um, so please, as soon as possible. I also like to just look at the personal information. What are you interested in? What are you looking forward to in biology? Like, tell me about that, guys. If you have something that's like really interesting to you in biology, maybe I can find a way to work into what we're doing. Okay, like this isn't set in stone. Uh, and try to be flexible with that stuff. And I'm interested in learning more about you. Some of you guys I know from previous years, which is cool. Uh, but I don't know a lot of you. So... Um, let me know. So that, I would say, by Friday, if you did it during learning block three today, that would be ideal. Um, but parent or guardian has to sign off on that as well. Okay, not physically. Just click in a box. All right? It's a Google form. Okay, so that's it for the course outline. I'm very, very quickly going to go through my classroom rules. This is a very non-traditional classroom environment. Um, please be in here at the beginning of the day so we can get started. You may or may not be aware that they lock the school at nine, question mark, uh, which is weird. So if you're here after nine, you have to go to the front door and you have to call and then somebody from the office will come and escort you in and then they have to sign you in in the office and then you come here, it's a huge pain. Don't do that, okay? It's, just, it's a huge pain. Uh, don't come late. If you could be here at the beginning of the day, we usually get started right away. So I take attendance with the people in the room, I get the live stream started, and then we get going. So uh, try not to roll in late, it, it will be problematic. And you can't bring your Tim Hortons or anything in here anyway, so there's no point. Uh, follow my instructions, this, it won't be a problem. I'm not worried about any of this stuff. Respect everybody in the room. <sighs> try not to talk over each other, okay? It, the, it's not a very crowded room, um, but you know, Let's be respectful to each other. Obviously, you're going to be accessing your electronic devices in here. You're going to be on a Chromebook all day. You are also locked into this room for like four hours with me. I'm so sorry if that scares you. <laughs> That's a long time for you to be in this room with me. So does that mean that you're not going to touch your phone while you're in here? Yeah, right. Okay. I don't live on the moon. So that's, that's impossible. You are going to get a text message. You are going to reply to a text message. You are going to use your phone occasionally while you're in here. Of course you are, okay? That's ridiculous to, to suggest that you're not going to. You don't even have time in between classes anymore to like do that stuff. So yes, you can use your phone in here if you need to, okay? If you wanna send or respond to a message, I would prefer if you weren't videotaping me, but if you, I mean, not that I'm not being videotaped at all times anyway, but uh, work with me on this, okay? You guys know what acceptable use looks like. I know that you do. So if you're using it for an acceptable amount while you're getting your work done, I couldn't care less, okay? Do whatever you gotta do over there. Just be professional about it. Treat everybody in here with respect. That goes for the people at home too. So in the chat, please treat each other with respect. If you're not doing that, I'm gonna kick you out um, or mute you. And for you guys in here, just be respectful to each other, okay? It's pretty straightforward. I don't think we'll have a problem with that. We are gonna do some group work. I have no idea how that's going to work. So uh, you will be a, I don't want to commit to anything here, assigned to a group, choose a group. I don't even know how that works though in this environment. You can't move around the room or talk to each other, like close. So uh, question mark, let me get back to you. Okay, there is, I think there's a way to do it, but I don't really know that, how that works. So I will get back to you. 
Uh, ask your questions. Please ask your questions. This class is so much more interesting and engaging if you're like, why does that happen? What does this do? Is there anything else that looks like that? What is that? You know, say things. Okay, it's weird. I know I realize everybody's nervous. I I'm a little bit nervous as well. We'll get over it. Okay, like we're going to be in here for a long time. We'll get over that. Ask your questions. Okay, make the class engaging for yourself. And that goes for the people at home too. Like, use the chat. Okay, I'll do my best. I I'll try not to ignore people in the chat. It's very difficult. I'm trying to pay attention to two environments simultaneously here, but I, I will try and uh, make sure I address things that are said in the chat. Um, and, I'll, and please don't pack up early, okay? I, I know that we're in here for a super long time. You're in here until 12.50. Just chill. Just relax until 12.50. You can't, you can't stand by the door. You can't, I wouldn't expect that to happen in this class anyway, but my other class, it was a little bit of a problem. People want to get out of here, especially on a Friday. Man, do I ever get that, okay? Uh, because you've been in here for a super long time, but just relax. Okay, there's nowhere to go. Okay, <laughs> you got to be in here until 12:50, 100%. So unless you're sick, so just chill, just relax where you are, find something to do. If you're done the work from the day, you're totally done the work. Awesome, that's so cool. I'm really glad that you're done. Play a game, read a book. I don't care what you do. Okay, just relax at your desk. Okay, if you want, sometimes I will have stuff from the next day ready to go. Okay. I don't know how often that's going to happen because I'm actually making the course as we go here. So uh, uh, some of the notes stuff I have from previous semesters that we're going to work with, but those are those may get changed as we go. I may have to modify stuff. Every, everything's just constantly in flux. Okay, the schedule might even change. I have no idea. So um, I may not have stuff prepared super far in advance here. I'm doing my very best. Uh, but if there is stuff available and you want to do it, go ahead. You're never gonna be get you know get into trouble from doing the next day's textbook reading. Huh. You did the next day's textbook reading, amazing. Now you don't have to do it tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> that's just less you have to do. So like you, you can't harm yourself by doing stuff ahead. We are going to do it all. So um, anyway, please try and follow the timelines. I understand that there's going to be some flexibility with that because of this model. But if you get behind on assignments, I already mentioned this, you're going to get yourself into trouble. Please make sure you're communicating with me if you're falling with, uh, behind on assignments, just so we can establish a plan to get you on track. Okay, it's not a big deal. I'm not going to yell at you or anything, but we do have to figure that out because as it starts to stack, you know, let's say you missed a week. Okay, you're a week behind. Oh, please don't let that happen. But if you get a week behind and now you're a month behind in the course, that's a month. Okay. If we don't have a plan to get you back on track and get that month figured out, there's no chance, guys. This course is done for you, okay? I don't want to try to scare anybody here, but like, try and imagine last year, like you missed a month of school. <laughs> That's not something that you just like brush off and be like, ah, it's only a month. I'll get that done. No, in the weekend, no problem. Like, it's impossible. So, let's chat so we can get you back on track, okay? We 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 are gonna have to plan that together. Uh, I know I mentioned in, in a number of these things, like try not to be absent or whatever. Yes, try not to be absent, but if for any reason you need to be at home to do the work, be at home, okay? I'm not asking you to like come in if you're not feeling well, ever. So please stay at home if you're not feeling well. That goes for me too. I have to completely change my mindset with regards to that because I hate bringing a supply teacher in here. I, we always fall behind. But the way that this model works, I could just do this from home. I absolutely could just do this from home. I'll just live stream this from home if I've got the sniffles, okay? I'm not going to come in here and expose you to anything dangerous because I don't know what it is if I have the sniffles, okay? I promise I'm gonna be looking out for your health. That is like my absolute primary concern in here. And so I would I ex ask you to do the same, okay? Look out for everybody else's health in here and just do the work from home if you need to. I have some extra tips here in general for success in the course. They include things like do the work, <laughs> eat, sleep, you know, do the things that are important for your life functions, exercise, Take some time to be social from a distance, okay? Do those things. Take care of yourself, please. Study, okay? Look back over your notes from time to time, especially at the pace that we're going to go here. You're not going to want to wait till the end of the week and be like, what did we do this month? Okay, that's going to be Wah! a lot. Periodically look back over what we've done so that you don't get into trouble, okay? If you feel like you are getting into trouble, let's talk. That's the last point here. Seek extra help as soon as possible. Doubly true if you're at home, okay? Don't let things slide. The purpose of this course, other than to keep you safe, is 
for you to experience and enjoy biology. Biology is cool. It's the best science, okay? Don't tell the other science teachers. Uh, I think it is anyway. I'm hugely biased here as a biology teacher, but uh, I love biology. I want you to love biology a little bit too, and I hope that you're going to find something in the course that's interesting and engaging and that you think is cool as well. Maybe you want to do this for a career. Maybe you are interested in taking For You Bio next year. Probably, a lot of you probably will. Okay, it's a really cool course. Uh, that's my first goal, is to get you interested in something in biology. Hopefully I don't poison that with the virtual labs and stuff like that. We'll see. I'm gonna, I'll try, obviously. Um, we're going to be working a little bit on, uh, in general, work skills in here, okay? Uh, with some obvious caveats for however we're going to do this from distance. But, you know, we are going to be working together in groups, question mark. Um, and, you know, honoring deadlines and all kinds of things that you have to do in a regular job. You know, those are skills that we're all going to work on together. You work on your interpersonal skills. Um, and then the last component of this is I'd like you to become better at science, scientific skills, uh, scientific writing, um, because you took a science course. I'm assuming you're interested in that as well. You want to learn about biology and you want to become a better scientist. You want to understand the science of biology better. And perhaps you want to apply that to a career in your future. Okay, so that's part of the course goal as well. If you took this course and you're not interested in any of those things, why are you here? <laughs> I don't understand why you took this course. Uh, it is totally optional. You don't have to take this course if you don't want to. If you're not into biology, um, I hope I'm not surprising you with anything I'm saying here. Uh, you probably shouldn't be here. You can't switch out of the course, unfortunately, because they're not doing course switches right now. But uh, yeah, we're, we're all in this together, if that's you. Sorry. But uh, yeah, we're definitely going to do biology in here. And I hope you're somewhat uh, interested in that. So that's what we're going to work towards this semester. Um, do the D. Let's go back. Does anybody have any questions from anything we've covered so far? I haven't really said too too much, I guess. How are we doing for time? Nine fifty. What do we have? Ten thirty? Is that when the no? Ten twenty. Okay. Uh, I think we're gonna be able to get all this stuff done for the little intro thing. That's good. So we did this, 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 this textbook sign up course outline. Went over the rules. Uh, explore learning. Have you used this before? You may have used it in grade 9 and 10. Maybe yes, maybe no. So if not, there's a sign-up sheet right here. Oh, that's weirdly slow. Uh, these are the instructions for signing up for Explore Learning. What Explore Learning is, is a system to deliver online labs. We've had access to this for a long time. Uh, uh, it, this has existed as far as I know, like since I started teaching, which is 10 years ago. Um, but 10 years ago, it really sucked. <laughs> so the online labs were terrible, very rudimentary little things. And a lot of them are excellent now. So they're, they're pretty good approximations of what we do in the lab. I mean, they're obviously not perfect. They're virtual versions of a lot of these things. But they are pretty good. So we're going to use these to substitute the real life lab experiences. Uh, I might do stuff outside of Explore Learning, but there's a lot of really good ones in here. Um, and so we're, we're going to use these quite a bit. So you go to that link. Then in the top right hand corner, uh, there's a place to log in slash enroll. You click on that and then there's a spot in there for class code. You put this class code in there. If you already have an account from previous years because you've been using it, you can log into your account and then just add a class and then you want to add this class code. Once you log in, you should see that you've been added to this course, which should say Grade 11 University Biology Section 3. If you haven't been added to that course, please tell me so then I can fix that. But we are going to use this a fair bit.
Anybody having trouble logging in or uh, creating an account? It's usually a few. Okay. Everybody okay with that sign up at home? If not, say something. You're going to need it too. While you guys are doing that, I got to hand your DBFs out. So these papers that are about to come out to you are the only papers I will give you for the entire semester. This is your data verification form. You need to review it. Your parents should review it, make sure all the information is correct. They sign it, and then it comes back to me, preferably before you're done this block. Okay, I have to collect these from everybody, and then they go to the office. It's the only paper you'll get all semester. And for those of you guys at home, uh, you'll get your DVF when you're in class here with me. Nice to meet you all, by the way.
Okay, tell me more, Connor. What do you need help with? Okay, for those of you guys at home that are trying to sign up for Explore Learning, I'm going to do it on the screen with you, okay? Give me two seconds. So, uh, how do I change my stream here? This? Oh, woo. Okay, so you're going to go to explorelearning.com. Okay, and then in the top right hand corner right here, you're going to click this button. And then at the bottom, there's a little place where it says class code. That's where you're going to fill in the class code for this class, which is 5L3ZHN. And you click Enroll in Class. And then uh, it'll take you through the sign-up process. So you can, either you have an account, it'll say, I have an account already, you put in your account credentials, or you say, I don't have an account yet, and then it'll take you through the process to create an account. Did, did that clear up your question there, Connor? I feel like under normal circumstances, this stuff would take like two seconds, but it's uh, everything is a little bit more uh, onerous. Okay, so we signed up for Explore Learning. The next thing I'm going to get you to sign up for is Kami. So Kami is a Google Chrome extension that allows you to edit PDFs. So instead of taking notes, it allows you to just click on a spot in the note and type in what you want to be there and then click on this spot on the PDF and then type in what you want to be there. Uh, it works really well. Um, it also, there's drawing tools, there's highlighting tools. Uh, it takes a little bit to get used to them, but so far uh, all the students that I've had use it have said like this is an easy way or this works fairly well for taking notes. So that's what we're going to use. So if you use the link where it says use this link to sign up, it should give you a free pro account of Cami, ideally, because uh, I'm paying for a pro account, and with that, my students are supposed to get a free one too, as long as they use this link. So click on that, sign up for an account, and then you do probably need to get the Cami Chrome extension. I think you just need to Google Cami Chrome extension. Uh, Cami is K-A-M-I, uh, and then add the Chrome extension to Chrome. So once you've done that, Show you what that looks like. Uh, you won't be able to see it up here. How do I do this so you can see it at home too? Um, so if you click it right here, why does this say install? Install Cami? I thought it did that already. Oh. Oh, so this isn't the, uh, oh, if you already have it, Connor, that's fine. That's fine. Then you just use the one that you, you've got. So once you open Cami, yeah, sure, that's totally fine, Connor. Yeah, if you've already got a, an account, then you just use the account you've got. So um, 
It gives you the option to open a file from Google Drive for you guys at home. Can I move this window over here so you can see it? Yeah, there we go. So it, when you open it, it gives you an option to open a file from Google Drive. So if you have the notes package saved in Google Drive, you just open it and then it will just open it like a regular PDF, except it'll have the editing tools on the side and it'll allow you to edit it. There is a little button in the top right hand corner, a save button. Click on the save button and then it, it, it gives you some options of where you want to save it. Pick a folder that makes sense. Okay, I would make a folder for this course uh, called SBI 3 ui uh, And then make sure you're saving the notes package, the one that you're editing in there. Uh, that way, when we update it every day, when we keep adding to the notes package, you know where to find it. Okay. Uh, I don't know where it default saves it, somewhere else. So it may, it may save it somewhere where you, you don't want it to be. Okay, but you can keep uh, updating the same PDF every day as we're adding to the notes package, and you can go back to review it at any time. As I mentioned, like if you want to print out the notes, uh, the, you can do that. That's fine, uh, and you can just you know use a pencil. But uh, you certainly you won't forget them this way. You'll have a digital version, and you won't have to have like the clutter. Uh, it's totally up to you. You you definitely don't need a paper set of notes, so it's up to you. Any questions on the Cami sign up? Oh, for the notes, it says that we don't have, like I don't have access to the notes. What? Okay. Let me fix that. Why would it say that? This is the stuff that I break every day. Oh, I have to make this a shareable folder. One sec. Share. Done. Okay. Reload. Try again. So right now, if you click the little tab at the top, which it's not showing here for some reason. Oh, there we go. If you click the little tab at the top, oh, you guys can't see this. Sorry. Um, can you see it now? Yes. If you click the little tab at the top where it says 3U course notes, what is in there are the completed course notes. So when I'm done taking a note, I always upload a copy of the note to that folder. Okay, and it gets updated as we go through a unit. So you can find my note in there. Your note is, gets posted in the actual um, unit itself. So if you're looking for the, the course notes for the for first unit diversity, if you click on the little diversity tab on the side here, you'll see the very first thing that's posted is the PDF of the course notes. It's right there. So that's where you, you get your version. That's the student version of the course notes, okay, that you're going to fill in and annotate and answer questions on and stuff like that, okay? So that's where that's located. If you want to try right now, you can click on that. Can you guys at home see this too? I don't know what you're looking at. One sec. So for you guys at home, you should try downloading that as well, the... Uh, the uh, diversity course notes. Download a copy, put it in your Google Drive, and try opening it with Cami. See if it works. Okay, you can experiment a little bit there. If you can't open that up in Cami, give me a shout.
So for you, Dom, if you click on the link right here where it says use this link to sign up in the content from the live stream, it should register you for the full version of it if you do that. It should. If it's not, I'll have to figure that out. Did you try, did you click that link? Yeah. And it, it didn't say like it, the link has been applied to your account and that it's now the paid version? No. Well, that sucks. What happens when you click on the link? It, it should say there's like a little message that pops up that says this code has been applied to your account and then it should be the pro version after you click on it. It worked last week. It says your new license has been applied. So now it's pro version. Yep, that's it. Yeah, it's an 83-day trial. That, that's how it works, Dom. So it means that my version, my pro version that I'm giving you lasts for 83 days. I think it's supposed to be for a semester. So mm -hmm. it just says that it works for 83 days. Yes? It's not. Okay, I'll come to you. I think you can do that. I think you want to probably add a copy to your drive first. So you like pick a location in your drive where you want the copy of it, and then you open that in Kimmy. That's just to make sure that you're editing your own copy of it. How are we doing, guys? Everybody else, okay? This is—I know this is a, the first day. It's going a little slow here. There's like a lot of uh, administrative stuff. We got to get everything working first. Everybody else at home, okay? Let let me know if you're having difficulty with the sign-up process. We good? Okay, I'm going to keep going. Hopefully everybody's got that figured out. If you are having trouble with the notes or like getting a copy saved or whatever, just let me know. We'll get it figured out. Okay, next. Download Loom. Loom is another Chrome extension. You can click on the link there. Um, if you sign up and make sure that you're using your school account, like you're in Chrome signed into your school account, it's free for students and teachers. It gives you the free 
full pro version for free. I don't know how long that's going to last, but that's it's available for free right now, I think for the whole school year. So um, this program allows you to do a screen record. You can put a little video of your face in the bottom corner, and we're probably going to use this for assessment stuff, or we're definitely going to use it for assessment stuff at some point, where you can record a little video explaining a concept to me, or I don't know, who knows, who knows how we're going to use it, but we'll use it for assessment for sure. It's very easy to share videos too, and they're fairly high quality, so works for all kinds of stuff. I use them to make tutorial videos for you. I have a number of them even linked on here. Uh, if I ever need to show you something really quickly, sometimes I'll make a little tutorial video and just plug it in there. It's easier than doing it as in part of the live stream. That one's a little bit more straightforward. I think it's literally like one button press to install it. You, you guys okay with that one? We good? Okay. Let's talk about the library. The library is physically closed. Uh, I think that the issue is that they couldn't figure out how to sterilize it inside and like make it a space that they can clean regularly because it would be like used for m multiple students. So uh, they currently don't understand how that's going to be opened at some point, but it so it's not physically open. However, you can use the library learning commons, which is uh, online ver the online version of the library. It's linked on the KCI website. Uh, it allows you to um, request materials. So, for example, if you want to read a book and it's available at the school library, you can book it. There's a link right here built into this document. To reserve a book uh, and they will put your name on it and have it sitting on a table outside the library and you just walk by and pick it up it's your book so you can still take books out of the library you just can't go into the library um, once the your, your book is returned to the library it has to sit in a quarantine for seven days before it is returned into regular circulation so just so you know like somebody thought about that it's not just like they're not exchanging hands on the books um, and that's going to be the process that you're going to use. Whoops. Um, if you've ever used OverDrive before, uh, I believe you can use it on your Chromebook. You can use it on a phone or a tablet. It's an app that allows you to take library books out. You can use it for the KPL too, by the way, if you use the Kitchener Public Library. Um, you can use your library card number in OverDrive, or you can use the school library, and you need your school account login for that. And it allows you to take out digital books. It also works for audiobooks. So um, if you're into audiobooks, I'm a big audiobook person myself. I like to listen to them in the car. But you have access to all a lot of resources. It's not every book that the library offers, but it's a lot. So um, that is an option that's available to you as well. I used it for my son over the over the break, so I could like get him like early reader books and like you know read him kids books and stuff like that. So you can get all kinds of stuff out of the school library. Uh, the library also has a library Google Classroom where they're going to update you on how the library is going to work if they change any of their policies or whatever. So Mr. Apple wants people to sign up for the library Google Classroom. There's a link to it right there. Feel free to do that. That's totally up to you if you want to utilize the library. But it is functioning. Like it's functioning as a library. You just can't go in it. I think you guys already know that there's like no other public spaces open, right? The cafeteria, if you've walked by there, is stacked from floor to ceiling with the extra desks and chairs. You may have noticed that we removed half the chairs in the room. Those had to go somewhere, so the cafeteria is full of chairs. Um, so we definitely don't have a calf. Um, we don't, like I said, the library is closed. The um, auditorium is, at least currently, not going to be used this year. Uh, unless they can figure out a good way to sterilize it. So the problem is, is like it's not part of the regular sterilized uh, common area of the school, and so they don't know how to book it or use, use it. Um, this is pretty much, I don't have too, too much else to say here, and I don't want to cut into your uh, time for your nutrition break. So what I'm going to do for the people at home, I'm going to put things on pause. I, I throw up like a little screen, uh, and I'll put on there a time when we're going to return. Technically, we're back at 11.05, yes? Uh, but it'll probably be more closer to 10 after. 
because I think we're going to go for a short little walk so people can stretch their legs and they're not stuck in one spot. So uh, I'm going to put up my little screen here for you guys and then I'll talk to, the, to you guys in the room. Okay, but I'll see you then at 11.10. Okay, last thing in the introduction. Um, you have to link your Brightspace account to your Google account in order to submit Google Docs for your assignments, which you're going to be doing. So in order to do that, I did, for those of you at home, I did post a little video. It's right at the bottom there where it says uh, video on how to submit Google Docs in Brightspace. So you, you, I guess you could technically watch the video, but I'm just going to show you. Oh, hi, Jane. I'll, I'll get you on my attendance in a second. Uh, if you go to the course home, if you go to the bottom on the right, there's a little widget in the corner there that says uh, access Google Apps. So you, there should be an option for you guys to log into your Google account there. Do you guys see that? Oh, another person too. Perfect. Fix my attendance here. Angela, Angie, that's everybody. Perfect. Do you guys see that option down there? So do that, log in. And then it brings you back, and then there's like another, you have to click there again a second time, and it says authorize. And then you're like authorizing your Google account to interact with your Brightspace account. And once you do that, then you can submit Google Docs in your assignment. It shows up as an option to like attach things from your Google Drive. If you don't do that, it just doesn't show up, and there, it doesn't explain anywhere why you can't do it. So uh, that took some figuring out last week. So in the bottom right hand corner, can you see the widget there on the home page? So this is if you go to the home. So if, you're, if you click on course home for the Brightspace page, and then you go to the very bottom on the right, there's a little widget right there, a Google Apps widget. Do you see it? Here's the that one. That's weird. Let's look. Google yeah, it only says that because you haven't logged into it yet. It'll add those after you log in. That's right. So you link it and then you have to go back and click on it. Another button with the authorize, but once you've done that. If for some reason you're trying to attach a Google Doc to one of your assignments and you don't see the option to do that, that's the reason. So I also had some people last week that did this and then later on they tried to do it and it didn't work and then they went back to this page and they had to do it again. I don't know why. You're only supposed to have to do it once, but uh, I don't know. I don't know the technology behind that, but that's the reason why you can't, why you don't have an option to submit a Google Doc. Okay. I, th I think we've, uh, I think we've covered everything. I, I was going to do a little um, safety uh, kahoot, but it's just a review of the safety stuff that we did this morning. Are you guys cool? You, do you want to do the kahoot or are you just, you do want to do it. All right. All right, let's do it then. Let's run it. So at home, you guys at home, I believe, can click that link for the safety kahoot, play it. I don't think you can play it with us because there's a delay on the live stream. So if you play it with us, you'll, you're, you'll always be in last <laughs> because of the delay. So I guess you could technically do it. Um, I'm not really sure how to show it to you because I can't run it on my iPad, which is what you're seeing at home. So um, this is going to be boring for the next few minutes for you at home. Uh, what could you guys do at home? Oh, I know what you could do. If you're at home and you're looking for something to do for the next few minutes while we're doing this, if you look under the diversity unit uh, under day one, there are some videos. There's two videos that go along with our first lesson that you're going to watch on your own. You could just watch those now. So uh, the first one is called Why Biodiversity is So Important, and the second one is called Five Human Impacts on the Environment. 
Um, so you're going to watch those at home anyway, so you can watch those while we're doing this little thing at school. I will say that for the most part, there's going to be no difference between the two, so um, this is just a rare occasion. Let's run this thing. Lobby music. Class appropriate nicknames, please. Well, you don't technically have these or your real name. Where's my mouse? Whew. I think I gotta turn the lights off. I can't see. I will say that uh, I didn't create this, by the way, the school created this <laughs> for uh, teachers to play in the classroom, so I don't take responsibility for the quality level of this code. <laughs> How are we doing? Is everybody in that wants to get in? Yeah, oh, you guys are fast. Or I'm slow. Who knows? <laughs> That's good, everybody got that. Yeah, you do all those things. I believe right now they actually have a person at the front entrance um, because they're expecting a number of people not to know about this policy, but eventually it's just going to be a sign with a number on it. And then somebody's going to call and uh, come and escort you in. Oh, sorry. Whoever made this seems to really enjoy all the above. Gotta make my comeback now. <laughs> Are they all all of the above? <laughs> <laughs> Someone didn't think about that when they made this. Manage to use the washroom you see that's already at maximum capacity. What should you do? I mean, I guess you could go back and try again later. If you wanted to. I mean, what if there's like a really long line? I guess it depends how bad you have to go. Interesting. Let's pay close attention to. The above again. Oh, I should mention. Do you guys? I'm sure you guys have noticed the the direction indicators on the floor. It's usually keep to the right. Um, at the beginning of school, you're allowed to ignore the directions on the stairways. So some stairways are up stairways, and some stairways are down stairways. But at the beginning of school, if, you're, if your class is on the second floor, you just take the nearest stairway and go up. Every, everyone's going to be going up, 
because it's the beginning of the school day and no one's leaving. So everything's an up stairway at the beginning of the day. Same thing is true at the end of the day. Every stairway is a down stairway. So you don't have to follow the up and down stairways at the beginning of the day and the end of the day. But just in between you're supposed to. I think we talked about that, about the waiting room. Did we mention that? Yeah. So you just let me know it's not a big deal. Okay, this is going to be one of those weird things where you're like, oh, I have a cough. And like, I don't want to say anything because it's embarrassing. We're going to have to get over that, guys. We're going to get sick this year. I am going to get a cold this year. I am. I'm sure. I've never had a winter as far as I can remember in my entire life where I haven't gotten a cold. You are, make it, might get a cold, okay? It's, there's a good chance. So this is probably going to come up during this year. Don't make it weird, okay? <laughs> Maybe you're going to go and wait there for a few minutes so your parents pick you up and that's it. Okay, it's not a big deal. Don't make it weird, okay? <laughs> I will probably have to do this at some point. Yeah, so you just get a new one from me. No problem. I got time. Holly pulls into the lead. Can't make every answer all the above. Remember this when I'm making a quiz for you. Yeah, and they're all the answers are all of the above, guys. When you arrive at school between 8 and 20, you should. That one's not all the above. Okay, so you come straight here. Straight forward. Oh, that was it. Alright, cool. Alright, I covered all I covered the basics. Are you still in first place? Hold it out. Oh, I came in last. That's embarrassing. Oh, I'm going to close enough to that too. Alright, so that's a little safety go. Just a quick little reminder of some of the safety stuff. All right, for those of you at home, we're going to keep going now. Uh, I'll probably cut this out of the video afterwards so that there's not like a giant gap where we're playing Kahoot in the middle. Um, so I'm hoping at this point everybody has attempted to access the chords notes. Signing into Google Drive, what? Really? What's happening here? There we go. Everybody's accessed the course notes. You're able to bring them up in Cami. Yep. Check on uh, if you have Cami open right now. Check to where you're saving it in Cami. So click on the save button. Look to where that file is being kept. Okay. Uh, if you want to move it to a new location, do that. Just make sure that you you know where this file is located that you're editing, because you're going to keep coming back to this file to edit it. Uh, and you don't want to keep editing a new file every time because your previous day's notes will be lost if you do that. So, so just make sure you know where this file is located. Okay. Here we go. So um, our first unit that we're going to discuss, uh, that we're going to do together is diversity. So welcome to the diversity unit. Uh, in this unit, we're going to be talking about all the different types of life that exist, at least that we know of, and how we categorize those different types of life and like the basic properties of those classifications. So it, we're mainly going to be talking about the kingdoms, the kingdoms of life. So kingdom animalia, animals, that's probably the one that you're most familiar with since we're a part of that kingdom. Kingdom plantae, plants. You're probably familiar with that one too, right? Those are like the animals and plants. My son only thinks there's two kingdoms, so he, everything's an animal or a plant. 
Uh, and that's fine. But uh, there's a few others that you're probably not as familiar with. So there's all the prokaryotes. So there's two, two of those. There's bacteria and um, archaea. So those are the two single-celled organisms that are prokaryotes. You guys talk about prokaryotes in grade 10? No one remembers what that means, <laughs> what a prokaryote is? That's fine. This would, be, this would have been in grade 10 biology. But a prokaryote is something that doesn't have organelles. It doesn't have membrane-bound organelles. So uh, bacteria and archaea are like that. And then there are all the ones that are eukarya, like you, that do have organelles. So animals, plants, protists, and fungus. Okay, so we're going to get into more detail with those later. But in the diversity unit, we're essentially going to be learning about all the diversity that exists on Earth and how to categorize it a little bit. So if you want to pull up the course notes, I'm going to get started with that right now. I found my note here. 3U diversity. Okay, so I start this package off talking a little bit about how to be successful in the course because it's a pretty intense course uh, at the best of times even when we have like a long timeline to do all of this stuff the main thing about this course is that it's a lot of new terminology every single day so I'm always hitting you with new words here's 10 new words here's 10 new words here's 10 new words so it's really important that you stay on top of all of the new vocabulary. I'm going to set this up for tomorrow, but we're going to keep a log of, uh, for this unit, diversity vocabulary, okay? With words, new words, words that are new for you, and their definition in your own words. In your own words is important, okay? I'm going to get you to submit this at the end of the unit, and uh, I'll evaluate it, but it's really for you because you're going to really, really want to try and keep track of all of the new vocabulary that's going to be showing up. People often say that like biology is a memorization course. It's not really. You need to understand how the systems work in biology. However, that being said, you do need to know what everything's called. And there is a lot of vocabulary. So keeping a good vocabulary list is going to be essential. Um, you, you, you got to do it basically or you're going to get into trouble. If you're terrible with vocabulary, I highly recommend that you develop some kind of flashcard system. There are a number of Google Chrome extensions and apps that like make flashcards so you can just and like run, run, let you run through flashcards uh, if you don't want to do paper ones, but you can also do paper ones, whatever works for you, okay? But flashcards are really, really useful for this. They were a total savior for me in university because there's just an insane amount of vocabulary. So I'm going to throw that out there right from the very beginning. This course is packed full of words. You're going to learn a whole bunch of new ones even today. So make sure you do all the stuff. So everything's laid out in the course, like one at a time, by day. Do this, then do this, then do this. So for example, learning block one, you do this note with us, then you watch these videos, then you do these questions, OK? Everything is laid out do all the things, okay? That's the very first thing, do everything. If you don't do everything, you wouldn't have covered any of the, co the course material that you need to know, okay? So you have to do it first. And then the second part is make sure that you review everything, okay? You can do it once. You can hear me talk to you about biodiversity once. You can watch a little video. You can answer a question. But if you don't look back at it tomorrow or the day after, it might be gone, okay? It's probably not gonna stick around in your head, especially considering that we're doing four hours of biology every day. It, I, I don't anticipate that everything that you hear is just gonna be magically stored in your long-term memory. That's not how humans work. So just keep that in mind, okay? Um, making study notes is gonna be important for you, probably. Uh, you can do them digitally. I recommend that you don't. So this is one area where you might want to consider using paper. There's a lot of research. I'll grab your question in one second. I, there's a lot of research that shows that writing stuff down and putting it in a physical space on a piece of paper helps people recall information. Um, I can't give you those resources because reasons, but 
I do recommend that you do use paper for making study notes. You don't have to. You could type them. Some people are just not great at writing, and that's, I mean, you may have to find an alternative in that case. However, you should consider writing um, review notes for yourself, okay? Um, it's good to try and organize and categorize stuff when you're doing review. You look over your note and you say, okay, what are the three important things about this, okay? This is supposed to be looking at the three aspects of the mitochondria. What are they? What are the three things that a cell membrane is out of in this note, or made out of in this note? And you go through and be like, okay, lipid bilayer, membrane proteins, cholesterol, whatever. Okay, and then what is each of those? You're going you're gonna to organize your, your thoughts. If you don't do any organizing and you just wrote, write stuff down, it's basically meaningless. Okay, you're wasting your time if you're not categorizing, if you're not building a system of memory in your head as you're writing stuff down. So that's what you should try and focus on while you're doing that. That'll, that'll be a skill that'll serve you well, probably for your entire career. Emilio, you had a question? I should also mention that if you're not really into reading, okay, or reading is not your strong suit, there is lots of software available that will read stuff to you, okay? Free Chrome extensions. So if that's something that interests you and you have to read a bunch of stuff from the textbook and you're like, ugh, like, I can't read this. Like, I'm really not that great at reading. I'm not great at understanding the stuff that I'm reading. Guys, there, there are tools for you to use, okay? Email me. Let me know. I will send you all of the links to that stuff, okay? You can just get stuff to read to you. Same thing is true if you're trying to get your ideas down on paper and you're just really not good at writing your ideas on paper. There's lots of software to take your speech and make it into text, okay? You just talk into the thing. That's also an option that's available to you. If that's something that you need or would be helpful for you, let me know, okay? I'll find those tools for you and you can use them too, okay? So anywhere where you're struggling, like let's just find some resources to help make that part easier for you, okay? But the memorization piece <laughs> for the vocabulary, I can't help you with that. So that's, that's that you got to do on your own. All right, so make study notes. There's some tips on here on making study notes. Study, okay? We are going to have some evaluations uh, probably more in quiz form, but you are going to have to study some of this material. You're going to have to know the parts of the digestive system, all the stops along the way, what happens to food at every stop, okay? Like, if you don't study your notes, there, there's no way you're going to be able to put that in there, okay? Or be able to discuss that. So you're going to go have to be able to go back and look over your, your notes. Don't do it all at once. Chunk, give yourself breaks, especially for you guys that have been out of school for how long, you know? Like, how much work were you doing like before the before the break? I think we were supposed to give you three hours per course or whatever per week. Is that right? But maybe not everybody did that. <laughs> maybe people did a lot less than that. I don't know. But it was not definitely not as onerous as it's going to be now. Not as difficult as what you're going to do now. This is a lot more work structurally. And so, I mean, we bring our minds out of hibernation a little bit here. <laughs> Certainly mine's been on vacation for a while. So, um, uh, just make sure that you're, you're chunking, giving yourself breaks in between, okay? Uh, and then I will be providing you with some review questions, but you are also going to want to, uh, you can create your own review questions, okay, based on the material that you're looking at. All right, let's get started with the actual course content. Biodiversity. What is a species? When you think of that word and you're like, oh, that's a species and that's a different species. So you look at the window and you see a cardinal and a blue jay. What makes them different from each other? Why, why would you call them a different species? Where does that even come from? What does that mean? What, is the, what does it mean for something to be a species? Ideas? What do you think? Okay, it has to be a living thing, so we generally don't classify things as species that are dead. How do we know the two things are different species? Like, how do I know that a blue jay and a cardinal aren't the same species? Okay, so they look different, so that's morphology. So that's one way that you can use to classify species. This thing doesn't look like this thing. However, within the same species, there can be quite a bit of diversity in morphology. I'll give you a great example. Dogs. Dogs are all the same species, but I think if you looked at ch a chihuahua and you looked at like a, a Doberman or something like that, you, based on morphology, you probably wouldn't call them the same species, um, but they definitely are. 
So what do you think, Ben? There's also males and females. Okay, so within the same species, you're, you mean like there's morphological differences, like uh, physical differences between male and female? Okay, so that's true. So there's differences between the male and female within the same species. And between species, a male uh, cardinal doesn't look like a male blue jay. A female blue jay doesn't look like a female cardinal. But how do I know that a cardinal and a blue jay are different species? How do I know that they're not like dogs? What do you think? Don't they have like different ways of communication? Like they make different noises? Okay, so there are other differences in that case. There are behavioral differences between the two of them. So that's another aspect potentially to, we, that we could discuss for speciation. Behavioral differences. Um, now in that case, that also gets thrown out with our dog example. Because I think that they could have different behavioral um, uh, components but they are still the same species. So we're not drawing our line there. Not typically, anyway. Although I will say that there are occasions where we use behavior to delineate species, but that's not the prime thing. What do you think? Okay, so that's also true. That's, that's a morphological difference. Again, like a physical characteristic difference between the two of them. They are different. That's also true uh, within dogs, though. So they're going to have totally different bone structure. How do I know that a cardinal and a blue jay are different species, but a doberman and a chihuahua are the same species? Any ideas? What do you think? Ah, it has everything to do with that. It has to do with their genetics, right? What can you do with a doberman and a chihuahua? I mean, at least technically you can. They can mate, okay? You can make a baby between the two of them. That 100% happens. But a cardinal and a blue jay can't mate with each other. It, it, you can't put them together to make a baby. So all of this comes down to members that are freely able to breed under natural conditions. Okay? If in the wild two individuals come together and breed, and I added, this is an extra on top here, produce viable offspring, they have to make viable offspring, that is offspring that are also fertile, then that is a species. You can take a Chihuahua and you can take a St. Bernard and make a baby dog that can also make babies. I don't know if that actually could physically happen. There might be some problems in the uterus there with the, due to size problems, but uh, technically you can put those, that genetics together. The under natural conditions is also important here because while a polar bear and a grizzly bear are genetically compatible. You can make a growler bear out of them if you put them together and they make fertile offspring. I have a picture of a growler bear right here. That's a grizzly and a polar bear put together. And they do that in the wild very rarely. Typically, they don't breed together under natural conditions. Mostly because their breeding seasons don't line up and because their ranges on earth don't line up very well. It does happen where you get members of a species that are like way outside of their natural range and they just happen to breathe at an inopportune time and then you get a roller bear. But it typically, these things don't exist in nature for a reason. Okay, there's something that's keeping them from interbreeding in the wild. So we don't call the roller bear a new species and we don't call grizzlies and polar bears the same species because of that reason. They don't naturally breed together. So in general, that is the biological definition of a species. If its members can freely interbreed under natural conditions and make fertile offspring, offspring that can make their own babies, that's a species. Can anybody see a problem with that definition? Other than, I mean, people have raised a number of problems already with this. Let me, let me put a question to you, okay? Uh, there are species of fish that reproduce with themselves, okay? They are hermaphroditic fish, they fertilize their own eggs, and they clone themselves when they give birth. They don't have partners. That exists, that's a real thing. What's the problem with the species definition in that case? What's the issue? There's nobody else involved in the activity. Right. They don't have members freely interbreeding, right? 
they're just breeding with themselves. So that's problematic. So that doesn't meet our biological definition of species. The same thing is true for single-celled organisms like an amoeba, for example. Okay, I'm pretty sure amoebas are asexually reproducing. You guys know amoebas? We might get an opportunity to look at these together later. Here's an amoeba. This is a protist. It's a single-celled organism. It reproduces by getting really big and then cutting itself in half. <laughs> and then there's two of them after that. Okay, it's binary division. This species does not freely interbreed because it just makes copies of itself. So, yes, this is the biological definition of species, but keep in mind there are some exceptions here and this is a little bit flexible. So we kind of have to flex this definition around some unusual stuff in nature, uh, atypical stuff in nature. But in general, we consider these to be species. Yes? Uh, it um, takes in nutrients from its environment, it eats things, uh, and then it uses its ribosomes to produce more proteins and structures, and then it just increases in size. Uh, you say they gain mass? Sure, sure. They get bigger. They gain mass. Yep. They grow. Uh, so in that case, going back to what, actually a number of people said this, you can look at physical characteristics, right? So when you look at physical characteristics in order to identify what is a species, we call that the morphological approach. Okay, morphology is, is just shapes. Okay, so we use morphology to figure out what is a species separate from another species when we can't use the traditional species definition. It works for bacteria, uh, although in bacteria it gets even more difficult because there's lots of different species of bacteria that have the exact same morphology, but they're different genetically. And then we use the genetic approach. So we look at their genetics specifically to determine species. But sometimes we use morphology. You guys have heard of like E. coli and uh, Staphylococcus. Those are two different types of bacteria. And they are, they are those types because of a difference in morphology. So staphylo, Staphylobacteria are like chains of, well, we'll talk about this later when we talk about bacteria more, and uh, Streptococci, uh, hold on, did I get that wrong? Staphylococci uh, are little circles. The bacteria are circular shaped. And, and, uh, and E. coli is a staphylococci, I think. And staph bacteria, uh, strep bacteria are long tubular bacteria that grow in big long chains. Anyway, they're, they're morphologically different. Okay, let's keep going here. Do. Yeah, so that's all that I meant I'm talking about underneath here, which is there are species that reproduce asexually. Uh, that's like plants and some microorganisms and fungus reproduces sometimes asexually, and so you have to use a different definition to take a morphological approach. So that's the general concept here when we're talking about species, which brings us to the idea of biodiversity. Biodiversity is a measurement of the number of species, okay? It's how many different living things you have in a given area, okay? And there are, are different ways to evaluate biodiversity. There's three ways in general that we evaluate it. The first way is to look at a species genetic diversity. You guys are gonna watch a video on this afterwards, by the way, so I'm not gonna talk a ton about these three um, because you're gonna get more information from the video about these. But genetic diversity is um, within a population, how different are the genetics from one member to another, or how much different genetics is, ex exists in the population. Usually the larger your population is, the more genetic diversity there is. That tends to be true. So in the human population, it's a very large population, there is a huge amount of genetic diversity. If you looked at somebody's genome on one side of this room and somebody's genome on the other side, you'd see quite a bit of diversity in genetics, okay? There's just quite a bit of difference uh, between us genetically. That's not true on a percentage basis, but, by the way. If you looked at the actual percentage amount different, it's like a millionth of a percent or something different. So there, it's not actually physically a lot, but the number of differences it can be significant. 
within the population. Okay, so that's the genetic diversity. Uh, the species diversity is uh, what I just previously mentioned here. That's the diversity in the number of species. So, uh, and how many species there are. Uh, sorry, how many species there are and the populations of those species. So if you have high populations and high numbers of species, then that's high species diversity. Okay, because you have lots of the members of each and lots of diversity uh, in terms of number of species. So if you go out and into a cornfield and you look at species diversity, it's pretty crappy. A cornfield has corn and it's pretty much a monoculture. You might have one or two different types of weeds growing in the cornfield. And then if you looked at the microorganisms and the other stuff growing, it's pretty weak. So there's not a lot of diversity because it's a monoculture. It doesn't support a lot of diversity. There's not many species and therefore there's not many, there's not a high population of those species either, except for the corn. So one single thing in a monoculture. Whereas if you were to go to the Amazon rainforest, you're going to see millions of different types of species. Uh, and then you're going to see high populations of those species as well. So that's a very high species population area. Structural diversity is the last part. If you have high species diversity, lots of different plants, lots of different animals, lots of different protists, then you have lots of different places for things to live. That's structural diversity. So when you have high species diversity, you get high structural diversity. The Amazon is highly structurally diverse. It has a canopy. It has a subcanopy. It has fertile soil. It has an intercanopy space. It has a, an area below the canopy, but above the soil. Uh, like lots of different places for all different types of species to live. And the reason that it has all those different places is because it has high species diversity. And it also supports high species diversity because there's all these different places to live. So those two things are directly related to each other. That's called structural diversity. Or sometimes, depending on who you ask, it's sometimes called ecosystem diversity. But those two terms mean the same thing. Okay, all of these three taken together are considered biodiversity. So biodiversity has those three components. The structures that are within a given area, and the structures are the structures of living things, trees, plants, whatever, you know. They, they can be aquatic as well. Um, species diversity, so the number of living things and the populations of those living things. And genetic diversity, how much genetic difference there is within a population or populations. Okay, that's actually differences in their DNA. And collectively, that together is biodiversity. Why do we care? You hopefully talked about this in grade nine. Why is biodiversity important? Did this ever come up? Because biodiversity sustains the environment. How does it sustain it? You're on the right track. Tell me more about it. Um, because every living thing plays a role in the success of the environment. Okay, so they all have a niche, right? Yeah. Exactly. So organisms within a given ecosystem have a niche, and the more niches you remove as you decrease the biodiversity, the less services those organisms have in supporting each other, okay? If something has 10 different things it can eat as a food source, if three of those go extinct, there's less things for that thing to eat as a food source, and its population decreases, and that thing also does a niche, and then if its population goes down, it affects... You guys talk about food webs, right? You would have done this in grade nine. So everything is interdependent. There's, it's a complex web. And so the actual, all these three types of diversity are important in maintaining the web. It makes a population resilient. That is, able to avoid damage. Okay? And that's especially important in a changing climate. If you have low biodiversity, and you encounter problems due to climate change, changes in growing season, changes in fertility, changes in rainfall. Those pressures cause decreases in population. And the lower your biodiversity is, the more significant those changes are on your population. So biodiversity causes resilience in nature. It's why we care about it. We get lots of things from nature. Uh, the video that you're going to watch uh, as part of this talks about those services. You're, you're going to write about them after you watch the video. But uh, give me one sec here. I'm going to pull that up.
just so you know what video I'm talking about. So if you look at today's content, the video is right here, Five Hint Human Impacts on the Environment. So this talks about the services that humans get from nature, irreplaceable services, things that we require from nature in order for the human population to survive. Okay, there are a number of those ecological services. You're going to watch this video and you're going to write them down. Um, but uh, we don't get those services if we don't maintain biodiversity. These... Uh, the biodiversity is what supports those ecological services. This is particularly important. I don't know if you guys have read, but very recently we were having a huge problem with biodiversity. Let me pull up the BBC from today. Oops. That. Do, do, do. Get out of here. I don't want to read any COVID stuff. It's already off the front page? Come on. I literally just read this. Maybe it would be in science. Here we go. I might post this article actually for you guys to read. But some recent research has been showing a extreme decline in biodiversity. Whoa, somebody calling me. That's weird. Um, an extreme decline that's happening in biodiversity over the past 50 or so years on Earth. 30% uh, of species are heading towards extinction. We're seeing like a huge, huge problem here in terms of maintaining biodiversity. It's very concerning. I, I'll post this article if people are interested in reading it. But Needless to say, part of this course is to make you aware of that problem and so that you understand the importance of preserving the Earth's biodiversity. Okay? As biologists, I mean, it's your job to be the voice for that to the public um, because I don't think people necessarily realize how important biodiversity is. If you live in a city, maybe you don't even care about what lives outside your city or outside your door. You should care, but uh, and we'll come back to that. You guys are going to watch that video in a minute. So I mentioned here below, again, what the three are. Oh, I probably should have pulled this up. I always forget how I organize my notes. So genetic diversity is the variability in the alleles or genetic information of a species. Species diversity is um, the size of populations and the variety of species. And structural diversity is the diversity in habitats. There's two examples of structurally diverse ecosystems right there. Oh, sorry. Actually, no. This is, a, this is a structurally diverse ecosystem. This is a forest, and this is a plantation. So this is a monoculture. And you can already see, just from looking at it, that this is a less structurally diverse place. There are less places for living things to live in a monoculture. You can, you can see it. Like it's, it's, it's physically evident by looking at it. So. Unfortunately, we have a tendency to do this. Uh, we're really good at making monocultures. Uh, you may be like on YouTube, see like, oh, plant 10 billion trees or whatever. Like, we're going to plant all these trees to, to stop climate change. Cool, man. That's great. Plant those trees. Are you going to plant only one kind of tree, though? Yes. Oh, okay. That's actually a really bad idea. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't plant 10 billion trees and they're all the same kind of tree because it doesn't address any of the biodiversity problems of cutting down trees. Because you create this, you create a monoculture and not a lot of things live in a monoculture. So this is a totally unacceptable way of preventing climate change. You don't want to be a monoculture way of doing it. Okay, you reduce all the biodiversity in the process. So you have to consider how you're replanting trees when you do that. And if you actually look into some of those tree planting programs, a lot of them don't do that. They actually just plant one kind of tree, which is a terrible idea. You know, those are things you do really have to consider when you're doing something like that. Um, okay, so what I'm going to get you to do right now, and how are we doing for time? Oh man, only get one thing done today? No, can't be. I'm going to give you a half an hour, and then we'll pop back in. We're not going to do the entire second lesson, no way, but I might just get started on it. Um, but what I'm going to get you to do is watch that video, watch them both, 
Okay, but the second one on the uh, five impacts uh, on the environment, that second crash course one there, they talk about what ecological services are being offered by the environment. Support services, provisioning, mod uh, moderating services, etc. So I want you to include those underneath here in terms of the importance of biodiversity. Um, and just quickly define each of those. What are the different services that are offered by nature and what do they do for us for each one, okay? It's pretty straightforward and then when you're done that, I have some questions on page 13 in your textbook. It's one, six, and eight. I know you people at home don't have the textbook yet. I'm gonna work on it right now for you. I gotta, I'm emailing you. Um, let's say, let's come back at 12.30. I'm gonna give you half an hour to work on that, okay guys? Okay, I'm just going to do a quick wrap-up uh, for you guys as well. So, um, oh, let me throw my iPad screen back on here so you can see what I'm talking about. <sighs> Congratulations, you've completed the in-class portion of day one. Um, we went a little bit slower pace today, which is not a big deal at all because we were just getting, getting our legs under us. Um, so you, you may have noticed if you reload this screen, I have reformulated day one a little bit on this sheet based on where we are. So if you've completed those homework questions, awesome. Um, we're going to do the nature of classification piece tomorrow instead. So what we are going to do today uh, during learning block three is... Um, you guys are going to create a Google Doc where you're going to keep your homework. Uh, don't worry about the first little set of questions that you just did there, but you're going to keep your homework there for the entire um, quadmester, okay? The idea being at the end of the quadmester, you're going to submit all of your completed homework in a document. Well, there'll be four documents, so, or five. There'll be one per unit, okay? So this is just for the diversity questions. And it's part of a portfolio that you're going to submit at the end to show like your course engagement. I, mean, I think I might use that as part of your evaluation. I'm going to figure that out. But if you're doing them by hand, that's fine. You can totally write them. Just take a quick picture of it and insert it into your Google Doc where you're keeping track of your homework questions. Okay, so when you're doing that, just make sure that you're including which day of the content in the Google Doc that you're doing. Like this is day two's content. This is day three's content. Today's day one. Okay, everything's labeled by day. Um, just so it's really clear that what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the homework from day one. I'm looking at the homework from day two, et cetera. Okay? So keep, keep it all in a single document. You can call it diversity homework questions or whatever you want. I have an article for you guys to work on during uh, learning block three instead of what we were going to do, which is something else. But this is an article about Earth's declining biodiversity. It's, it was released seven days ago, so it's a fairly recent article about a World Wildlife Fund study about Earth's declining biodiversity. You're going to read it, and then there are just four quick questions that you're going to do during learning block three. It's not too much stuff. Is that a question? No, sorry. Um, if you'd like any help at all, Every day, I'll be available in the virtual classroom. It'll be posted. I just have it running here, okay? So you can pop in, you can ask questions, you can pop out, you don't have to stay. It just anytime you need to come and contact me during Learning Block 3, that goes for the people at home too. Um, you can just show up, ask your question, and then leave, okay? So it's pretty, it's pretty simple. Students in my other class are using it all the time. Uh, I guess you guys are in, in the room, so you don't need it as much. But at home, feel free to drop by anytime. You're having difficulty accessing something. You don't know what's going on. Come and talk to me. Um, so other than that, that's stuff for learning block three. And I will see you guys tomorrow. we got to wait for the bell, but we've got like a minute left here. Are we taking your textbooks? Yes. They're yours. You have to take them home because the desks get cleaned every night. What's that? Yeah, you can just leave that there. I gotta sterilize it and put it away. Okay guys, I'll sign off here too for the people at home. And we'll, we'll start for those at home with the live stream again tomorrow in the morning. So it's at uh, 8.25-ish is when we usually get started.